Trixie. And in case you wondered, what happened? Why haven't there been any videos for two weeks? Nothing. Nothing happened. I was involved in other creative projects, such as the podcast. I also started a Redbubble account out of the blue, which felt great. So I took some time off, refocused for a while, and now I'm back. In today's episode, I want to talk about music instruments, to be precise, and where to find them inside of the German language, mostly serving as metaphors for different situations. For example, let's take a look at the German verb etwas vergeigen. That means to mess something up, but literally it's to miss violin something. Where is the violin, you ask? Well, right here as a violin is die Geige in German. So to express that they screwed up, Germans borrow the picture of a bad sounding violin, turning themselves into an untalented musician of life. But that's not all concerning violence. There's also the phrase die erste Geige spielen or die zweite Geige spielen, to play the lead violin or to play the second violin. You may have guessed it, it's related to orchestra. Translated to a more casual context, die erste Geige spielen means that you are the center of attention. Die zweite Geige spielen means that you take a back seat in a certain matter. If I'm not mistaken, to play the second fiddle is also a thing in English. And yeah, usually when people use these phrases, there can be a little bit of of jealousy involved. Talking about violence in the German language, we cannot not mention a very famous German insult. Die Arschgeige. Literally, the ass violin. It's quite harsh, but also hilarious. If you wonder how this word became a thing, there's the term Armgeige for a viola, die Bratsche. And I guess some funny bastard just made Arsch out of arm. Another one, if you decide that you need to toughen up and tackle a problem more aggressively, you can say andere Seiten aufziehen to restring your violin or your guitar. You are about to change tune. Maybe you need to give somebody a long deserved roasting. Jemandem die Meinung geigen. To play somebody your opinion on a violin. Take that. Eek! Difficult to translate that literally, but I'm sure you're getting the spirit. Hör mir zu, Martin, ich geig dich jetzt endlich mal die Meinung. Ab sofort ziehe ich andere Seiten auf. Du bist echt das Letzte. Und jetzt hast du es endgültig vergeigt. Es ist aus mit uns, Arschgeige. Genau so werde ich es zu ihm sagen. Gleich heute Abend, wenn er... Oh. Moment. Hi, Schatz, na? Ja, klar, kann ich machen, natürlich. Okay, bis später. <lacht> Also, wenn der von der Arbeit kommt, der wird sein blaues Wunder erleben. Next instrument, a trumpet. Die Trompete. While Trompeten generally means that you are playing the trumpet, it can also describe a way of speaking. Like when you say something in a very shrill, indignant way. He did what? Germans also sometimes use it when somebody loudly blows their nose. <laughs> I guess that's because it kind of sounds like an elephant trumpeting. And same as in English, you can call that Trompeten in German. From a trumpet to a flute. That's die Flöte in German. Same as Trompeten, Flöten can describe a way of speaking. In this case, it's more like whistling though. You say something in a honeyed tone. You know, like, ah, oh, wir könnten diese Unterhaltung bei mir zu Hause weiterführen. Im Bett vielleicht? Apart from that, there is the phrase Flöten gehen, to go fluting, which implies that you lost something be it something physical or like a feeling or a spirit. Das, das kann doch nicht wahr sein. Schon wieder ist ein Socken in der Waschmaschine flöten gegangen. Ich weiß es, ich weiß, du warst das. Jetzt guck nicht so, du Arschgeige. What do you do with flutes and trumpets? Well, you blow into them and they toot. So the German phrase von tuten und blasen keine Ahnung haben, to have no clue how to blow or toot, must be somehow related to that. It expresses that somebody is totally inexperienced or, you know, Kind of dumb. So people like you then. The phrase isn't used that often though, because frankly, it sounds a bit ambiguous. Blasen. Too many Germans think of something else than music here. Bubbles, of course. Seifenblasen. Where else can you find music in the... I hit my funny bone. Do you know what that's like? It's so weird, like ants crawling all over your skin. Your whole arm becomes numb and sort of starts vibrating. Sounds are also vibrations that travel through the air. Therefore, it doesn't come as a surprise that Germans roughly relate this weird sensation to making music. We call the funny bone 
der Musikantenknochen. The musician or minstrel bone. So when you hit it, it's like your body plays a beautiful pain music for you. Music is also included in three other sayings. One of which being, der Ton macht die Musik. The tone makes the music. What matters isn't what you say, but how you say it. Entschuldigung. 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 Das ist Musik in meinen Ohren. Same as in English, that's music to my ears. You really approve of something and have positive feelings towards it. Hast du das gehört? Das war ein Derbonier-Geräusch. Hm, Musik in meinen Ohren. And lastly, there is, hier spielt die Musik. Here is where the music plays. This is where the action is. Come here, come to the dark side. We have cookies and music. In hopes that you had fun today and learned something new, I want to end this video with a quote by Friedrich Nietzsche. Ohne Musik wäre das Leben ein Irrtum. Without music, life would be a mistake. Wow, that's deep. That's what he said. Did you just, did you just, that's what he said me? All right, Rabbits, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. If so, please leave a like, check out my podcast, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support Don't Trust the Rabbit even a bit more, you can also find me on Patreon. I would really appreciate your help. Now I wish you all a wonderful day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.